Have you ever wanted to make your own homemade soda fountain syrups? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a flavoring essence that you mix with simple syrup to make your own homemade soda syrup. You can use it in a soda stream, you can use it behind the bar with a soda gun, or you can just measure out an ounce of the syrup, open a can of seltzer, pour it on top, and you have your own homemade soda. It's super simple to make. You only need a couple ingredients, a little bit of technique that I can show you in 10 minutes, and a little bit of patience. And if you've ever wondered what the markup is on soda syrups, you'll find out in this video as well. So let me show you how to do it. I'm Darcy O'Neill, this is Art of Drink. I've been writing about cocktails and drinks since 2004. And I wrote a book on the history of soda fountain. And I've spent a lot of time looking at these old soda fountain manuals. There's this very specific way to make your own homemade sodas. It's not hard, doesn't require anything technological. And if you don't have a filtration device like this, coffee filters will work. So let me show you the basic formula for the starting point for almost every soda. It's been standardized a long time ago, so I'll show you that now. So to make a soda fountain essence is fairly simple. All you need is one ounce of pretty much any essential oil. Again, each one's gonna have vary in the concentration, but this will always be your starting point. So one ounce of essential oil, and then you add that to 15 ounces of ethanol. And that's going to give you your essence. So basically your flavoring essence. Now if you do this metric, it's gonna be 30 mils and 450 mils of ethanol. So that is always gonna be your starting point. When you get better at this, you can adjust this, but this is what pharmacists, the standard essence was always made from, was one ounce to 15 ounces. Now you take one ounce of this essence, and then you add that to simple syrup to get your flavor. Now this is where the only variable in this is that some pharmacists or soda fountain operators added one ounce to one gallon, or 3.8 liters, of simple syrup. It's usually either one to one simple syrup or three to two. And then that would give you your flavor syrup. Now others, other manuals, other soda fountain guides said one ounce to one quart which is basically a liter of simple syrup, and that would give you your flavor syrup. Now it just depends, some things like wintergreen, which we're gonna make today, uh, will do fine at one ounce of essence in one gallon of simple syrup. Uh, other things you might wanna do one ounce and a quart, again, it's all gonna be on your preference. But the thing is, this is the only variable in here, is this part. Now, if you take one ounce of your flavor syrup, and add it to seven ounces of soda water, that will give you a glass of soda. So basically one ounce, one ounce, one ounce. Uh, so you do the dilutions and you get there. Uh, if you do it one ounce to the gallon using 16 ounces of essence, that's going to make you 2000 glasses of soda. If you do one ounce of essence to a quart of simple syrup, and using 16 ounces that you created at the beginning, that's gonna get you 500 glasses. So it all depends on how concentrated you want this to work out. But when it comes to pricing, if you're looking at like citrus oils, they're pretty cheap. So lemon, lime, grapefruit, orange. I've calculated it out to be $1.62 per ounce for lemon oil. And you know, you're gonna go up in price for certain things. So maybe it'll get up to $3 an ounce. But if you're doing lemon, 
which is pretty common in a lot of sodas. It's gonna cost you $1.62 for one ounce. Now, if you are using Everclear, it's $20 for a 26 ounce bottle, but we're only using basically a fraction of it. So that's actually gonna, I calculated it out to $12. So your input costs are $13.62. To make one pint or 380 mils of your essence. Now, depending on which way you go here, so if you make 16 gallons of simple syrup this way, that's going to cost you 62.50 in sugar. I'm assuming water's free. Now, if you do one ounce to one quart of simple syrup and you do 16 quarts, that's gonna cost you $12.50. Or this one. And this one's gonna be obviously that one. Now, if you do this, it's all going to add up. When you add all this up, depending on whether you're doing 2,000 glasses or 500 glasses, if you do 2,000 glasses, it will cost 0 0.038 dollars, or or 3.8 cents. If you do 500 glasses, it's gonna cost you just about, just under five cents a glass. So it is quite cheap to make, and that includes your cost of sugar, your alcohol, and your essential oil. So if you're experimenting, uh, or you're just like creating things, uh, this is a good way to go. If you are a bar and you want to start a soda program, so you want to actually sell sodas as your non-alcoholic drinks, but you're sick and tired, like most people are of selling Coke and Pepsi, like we've all had them, we want something interesting. Uh, this, your input costs are gonna be really low. And once you nail down a formula, uh, it's gonna be cheap and you can charge five, six dollars for a custom soda. So you're, it becomes a profit center for anybody that's opening a bar or running a bar. So now that you know the formula and the cost, let me show you how easy this is to make. So now that you know the basic formula for making a soda, it's basically your one ounce of essential oil in a pint of alcohol and or high proof vodka if you have it or even just basic vodka will work. Uh, the trick is to get these what are called terpenes out and this is where the magnesium carbonate that you see here comes into play uh, because what we're going to do is measure out our oil and terpenes are a flavor compound, and they add a lot of flavor to your soda syrups, but they also form a hazy compound. They are not soluble in water. And we get them a little bit soluble in simple syrup. And there's a couple other techniques. So if, if you ever wondered what caramel syrup was for, caramel is to help dissolve these terpenes and other essential oils into your water solution. Uh, I've done a video on it a couple weeks ago. You can check it out up in the, the corner here. And if you're not worried about having perfectly clear sodas, then you don't necessarily need to do this magnesium step. This basically just binds up some of the oleoresins, the waxes, and some of the terpenes that cause haziness in soda. If that is not a concern for you, then you just simply mix one ounce of your essential oil or combinations of essential oils into one pint of alcohol and you will have your solution. However, pharmacists back in the day, they made their own syrups and it was a point of pride that they had perfectly clear syrups. And so this is where this technique comes from. Now it's really simple. You basically need to measure out your essential oil. We're using wintergreen. Now this one's an easier oil to get into solution. It is partially soluble in water. Uh, orange oils, like bitter orange oils, are probably one of the toughest. And this is actually an essence I made in a trial run. It's still kind of hazy. You might be able to see that it's hazy. Still working on that one. Uh, but this is where the patience comes in, that sometimes you need to allow these to sit with the magnesium carbonate for 48 hours or even up to a week. Now, when I talk about magnesium carbonate, it's just a salt. Some people use it as a health supplement, um, but you'll most often find it in weightlifters and rock climbers, and you just powder your hands with it, and it helps you uh, grip things better. Now, the reason that works for rock climbers 
and soda fountains is magnesium carbonate is not soluble in water at all for all practical purposes. That means we can filter it out and it will not affect the oil or the essence that we're making. What happens is these very small particles of magnesium carbonate will bind with the resins and the waxes in these essential oils that cause the haziness. So this was the method that they used to get it out of solution. Now there, there's multiple different methods for doing this. Some people just heat it up and then cool it down. I recommend using you know, room temperature, maybe slightly above alcohol uh, to dissolve the oils. And then what you do is before you filter it, chill it down and that will cause the wax to come out of solution, bind to the magnesium particles and then you can separate them. But for today, we're just going to, we're going to do a, a half volume. So 240 mils, half a pint. So that is, we're going to require 15 mils of oil. So this is just pure winter green oil. In old soda fountain manuals, you'll hear it's called checkerberry. So once you have your 15 mils of oil, we're just going to add about half an ounce of magnesium carbonate. Now this stuff is very light, so you just need to use about, I know each one of these spoons is about four grams. And so that works out to about half an ounce or a tablespoon. And then what you need to do is just gently bring it into a paste. Now it will form a very sticky paste and that's a good thing because what you're exposing is the oil to all of the uh, magnesium carbonate and the resins. But it looks pretty difficult to work with right now, but what we're going to end up doing is adding alcohol to this and it will make it more fluid. And then when we will be able to uh, get that into a, another container. Generally for alcohol, you want to use something that's like 95% or 80%. I use 80%. It's got a little bit of water in it. But if you can't find Everclear or 95% alcohol at the liquor store, you can use vodka. But you'll definitely need to allow it to sit with the magnesium carbonate a little bit longer. Now, magnesium carbonate serves multiple purposes and the one is that it is insoluble in water and then you can bind the resins to it. Another thing is when you filter it, it's going to form a nice dense layer because the particles are so fine that when you filter this through, it will also filter out anything else. So often it'll catch some of the waxes and the oleoresins. Now once you have your solution dissolved in alcohol, it'll take about two minutes to get it all kind of mixed up. Um, you need to filter it. Now you can do this with a coffee filter. Uh, I prefer a vacuum pump. It just works way quicker. Um, I just add the filter, add a little alcohol. That just moistens the filter and helps prevent any of the magnesium carbonate getting into the uh, filter disc. It's called fritted glass. If you do forget to put a filter paper in there and you're worried that you've ruined your filter, all you need to do is add some citric acid and the citric acid will react with the magnesium carbonate to form magnesium citrate and carbon dioxide. Magnesium citrate is soluble in water and it'll just wash away. Now this is basically just a hand operated vacuum pump and it will, if you ever do anything where you're mixing herbs and spices or essential oils or doing any extractions, macerations, these will speed up your time significantly. And I do recommend getting one if you play around with bitters or any ingredient. Um, it just makes life a lot easier. So now once you got this ready, just give it a good stir and pour it right on top. Now at first you may see a little bit of magnesium carbonate come through. That's because I'm using a 20 micron filter. I probably should have used a 10 micron filter, but that's okay. There's a way to filter that out. Now, you just need to rinse your bowl with a little bit of alcohol. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if you find out your solution came out a little bit hazy, fairly easy fix. All you have to do is remove this, just temporarily put it in a beaker. And what you're going to do is pour this into here. Got to mix it up to try to get as much off the bottom as possible. 
And you're gonna put a little more, and just remember, don't go over 210 mils because you're gonna need that to finish off your solution. You don't wanna make more. But again, it doesn't really matter. You can make a less, a solution that's not as strong or you can make a stronger solution. This is just the starting point for a lot of the work. So you get that back on. And now because the magnesium carbonate has formed this fairly thick disc, uh, it's going to be even finer filtration. So you basically just add this back. and filter it again. Now you see that it's coming out much clearer. Now, every oil is slightly different, but you always wanna start with that one ounce per pint or half an ounce for half a pint or a quarter ounce for 120 mils. You know, that is the basic starting point. Now, once you have your essence made, uh, you just basically add it to simple syrup. Now, there's different manuals and different recommendations. Some would add a single ounce of your essence to a gallon or four liters of simple syrup. So that'd be 30 mils to four liters, or roughly four liters. But others would do a more concentrated flavor where they would add one ounce or 30 mils of the essence to one quart or one liter of simple syrup. It all depends on how strong you want it, but there is a basic fact that you can only dissolve so much oil in water. Sugar is going to help keep it in solution, but you can't push it too far because many things only have like a solubility of like 60 milligrams in a liter of water. So it, it, these terpenes and some of these essential oils do not go into solution that easily, but they do provide a lot of flavor. And luckily humans can smell very minute quantities of things. So adding more oil doesn't actually make it better. Now, if you're working with like lemon oil, lime oil, grapefruit oil, and orange oil, uh, there's a slight difference in that a lot of those are cold pressed. So wintergreen is steam distilled. So you're not gonna get as many of the resins. You're still gonna get the terpenes and some of the other compounds. But if you're using orange oil, it's particularly tough because it has such a high terpene content and it's usually cold pressed. So you're gonna have more of these oleoresins in it. So it becomes a more difficult one to get into solution. But as I mentioned, if you're not worried about having a slightly hazy soda, um, then by all means, don't even worry about this whole process but you will find that uh, terpenes are important for flavor. There are companies that make terpene-less flavoring oils. Now, the one thing that a lot of people recognize is that they don't have the flavor that the terpenes do. So it tends to be a more subtle flavor. So if you're looking for something with punch, the terpenes are gonna give you that. Now that filtration process, I did it twice, took about 15 minutes. And so what you wanna do is Carefully remove this. You'll see that this oil is pretty much clear. There is a touch of uh, magnesium carbonate in it. But for the most part, it is clear enough that if we added it to this bottle, Now that is your wintergreen essence. Now wintergreen's used in a lot of root beer formulas. Uh, it kind of replaced sassafras once sassafras oil was taken off the market. But as you can see, it is practically clear. If there is any sediment from the magnesium carbonate, it'll just settle to the bottom and you decant that off. But that's how you make the essence. You take one ounce of this and then you can just add it to simple syrup. Then you'll have a basic root beer. And if you're worried about the alcohol content of this in your syrup, it goes down to 0.8. 0.5%, so not even half a percent, but uh, a tenth less than that. And so that means that for all practical purposes, alcohol won't even be detectable. It is completely non-alcoholic. So one thing to note is that when you add this to simple syrup, it is going to be cloudy. So um, in the proportion, it's basically one mil of your essence to one ounce. And when you add it, you'll notice that it does go cloudy. But if you stir that, you'll see that it goes into uh, it'll go into solution and 
um, be practically clear. It does, it does require shaking to get it emulsified into the simple syrup. But for the most part right now, it's clearing up and that just took a few seconds. So if you add your essence to your simple syrup and it goes cloudy really quickly, just shake it, it'll be fine. If you find it's not going into solution, warm up your simple syrup. So if you have any questions about this, please post them in the comments section below because making a clear solution is slightly more complicated, but I will help you if I can. Please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this in the future. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.